My next guest is uh, Karen Rogers, and uh, she is a rarity in thoroughbred horse racing. She is a successful female jockey. We'll ask her about that. i find out if that is a rarity. She is only 19 years old and was the country's leading female rider in 1979 and 1980. Last week at Aqueduct, she rode a courageous ride, which one rider called a moment of drama unparalleled in recent racing history. Please welcome Miss Karen Rogers. Let me ask you about that. Is it, uh, are you, uh, is it a rarity for a, a female to be a successful jockey these days? Um, well, I guess so. It, you know, there are other girl riders that are doing well. There's yeah. a girl that won a 100,000 down in uh, Hialeah in Florida. There's a big race down there, so I think it's becoming more accepted. Who was the, f the first one that, uh, there was one and then it seemed like, uh, like uh, it, it became more uh, accepted or run of the mill? Well, most people know about Robin Smith right. because she did the Shasta commercials, and most of, <laughs> <laughs> most of the public knows her, I guess. I don't know. And she, she, mar she married Fred Astaire. Right. I guess people know her because of that. Yeah. Does Fred Astaire hang around tracks looking for uh, picking up jockeys? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've been working on my dancing, you know. My mom's been teaching me some of those steps. <laughs> uh, 19 years old. Just a kid, huh? Well, I started when I was 16. Probably. What is the, What is the? you know, we know how Pete Rose got to be a baseball player. How did you get to be a, a jockey? Well, my family, you know, my mom rode and my whole family was into horses. And uh, I started riding when I was three, and I started riding races when I was 12 against uh, other kids. It wasn't professional. Yeah. And uh, they were, we had some really crazy times. I learned a lot, you know. It was just, uh, they built courses around barrels and stuff. and I In really the living got, room. <laughs> no, well, out in, out in field, yeah. at the hunt meets, but I really like Well, no, the hunt meets, sure. Now, yeah. what, uh, does your family, now that you're a, a, a jockey, do they, they like that okay? Yeah, well, my, uh, my dad, he's a teacher, and uh, he coaches athletics, mm -hmm. and uh, my mom, she's an artist, and she's real, everybody's real supportive, so. Do, do some of the other jockeys, some of the guys who have been doing it a long time, give you problems, make fun of you, or, uh, I don't know? No. No, I get along real good with all of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you. No, really, everybody, I don't think, I don't know, people don't really give enough credit to the riders, I guess. They, you know, a lot of people boo Cordero and everything, but if you get to know him personally, he's really a nice person, you know, he tries to help me and everything. And Just for the heck of it, one day boo him, see what happens. <laughs> I knew I wasn't at the racetrack when I walked in and everybody cheered. I said, it must not be that. Everybody <laughs> usually boos. Uh, they, yeah, they do. They get on the riders. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, they think it's the riders, but it's 90% the horse. Is it really? Yeah. yeah. So now you're actually kind of discrediting what you do. You're saying that you're only 10% of a successful race. Well, yeah, it's what the horse is doing underneath you, you know. I'm just, you know, I can't run for the horse. All I can do That's is guide it's illegal and tell him too. where to go. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much, uh, let me, uh, this is a stupid question, but how much do you weigh? Uh, about 95. 95. Uh, and how much uh, does a horse weigh? 1,500 pounds. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, okay. Now, let's, let's talk a little bit about the race at Aqueduct. Uh, I think we're going to take a, you want to take a look at the videotape? You've, of course, seen it. When did this happen? It happened uh, the 25th. It was, wasn't was 25th of February. Okay, and just tell us briefly here what we're going to take a look at. And it's a, it's a sad thing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. When a horse, when that happens, it's, you know, everybody gets upset, the trainer and everything. But, you know, it happens once in a while, not that often. It's actually, it's really the first horse that broke down with me. And I've been riding for three years, so yeah. it's not really that common. What was unusual about this was he, not only did he break down, but he won the race right. also, right? Well, he won that on his own courage because a lot of horses, if they're, you know, if they think they're going to break their leg or something, they they won't try. They'll just they'll just stop. You mean a horse can sense an a injury horse can coming sense. on? If they're hurting, they'll you they won't they, even try. Yeah. So it's really unusual for a horse to have that much courage, that much heart to really try to win a race. And see, I I didn't know he was in pain because he was running like he was going to win yeah. it. You'd you run know? him before, right? You would. No, I never rode him before. Oh, I see. No. So yeah. Um, well, let's take a look at the video okay. tape here, and then uh, this is at Aqueduct, and you said uh, February 25th? 25th, at okay. right. About a week ago. We're at the top of the stretch. Bright and Brave has the lead by a neck. Sly Flyer on the rail, gaining ground, and now Sly Flyer takes the lead. Bright and Brave is second. On the rail is Joe Montage with Graville. 
Reveal is now third. Gaining ground on the outside. Read me the names and Hilaris. Those two moving very quickly and Hilaris now takes the lead. Yeah, and then that of course was you was you on the horse. That, what, what goes through your mind when that happens? Well, the first thing you try to do is just try to reach up and grab the reins and try to stop them. But mm -hmm. when you're in a drive like that, it's hard because all your momentum is forward and you're going like 40 miles an hour. And when it happened, it was, you know, so quick. I just hope he, that he would stay up. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got my balance, I got him pulled up right after the finish line. Yeah, yeah. And, and unfortunately, they couldn't save the animal. Right. His leg was shattered. And most of the times they can save him, you know. When I was starting out riding, we had a farm. We had a lot of horses with injuries, broken legs. We were just, you know, bringing them back. But, you know, sometimes when it's real bad, they, they made a lot of progress it. because it oh, used yeah. to be any kind of minimal in injury, and the no, horse. No, I think that's overdone. People always say, "Oh, they shoot the horse," but usually they they save them. And mm -hmm. if it's a really bad case where the leg is totally shot and the horse couldn't stay on it, you know, they they give them a needle. You know, it's mm -hmm. not, it's humane. It's not, you know. What uh, remember Steve Calvin, of course. Mm -hmm. What has become of him? He is still uh, riding in England. He's riding over in England, and uh, he has a big contract. And I guess you know he only rides from March till December, and he's doing very well over there. Yeah. What What do you uh, look for yourself? What would What would please you? What would make you happy? Uh, to win a big stake and just you know keep doing good. And maybe travel. I was asked to go to Sweden and Japan in September, mm -hmm. so. Uh, I just like to ride, and I like, you know, I like New York. I want to stay here. Yeah. Is it generally your life's uh, fun then, huh? Oh, yeah, I yeah. enjoy it. Well, mm -hmm. I, it was a pleasure to meet you. I appreciate you coming by. Okay. This is Karen Rogers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we'll be right back.